Hey guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video. Manchester City, of course, drew last night disappointingly 0-0 at Selhurst Park against Crystal Palace. Um, in what many would perceive as a blow to our title race, I'm probably not going to disagree. Uh, though we are still, of course, top of the table, there was plenty of talking points to take from that game. And I'm going to go through some of the things that I personally took from that today. And hopefully... Uh, offer some insight, offer maybe a calm head and some moments of concern potentially. Uh, before I do that quickly, I want to say um, if you don't know about football prizes, they do loads of competitions where you can win incredible Manchester City related goods. Like, for example, this uh, prize which ends tonight at half seven. So if you're watching this, you've got a couple of hours to enter. There's like 17 tickets left. It's two Tunnel Club tickets to now the biggest game of the Premier League this whole season. Manchester City versus Liverpool, two Tunnel Club tickets for you could win both for £9, £9.95. That's an insane offer. You can click the link in the description. Only a few tickets left. Only only 199 available, so you've got very good odds there to win it. Best seat in the house. You'll see the players. It'll be an absolute once-in-a-lifetime experience. That ends tonight. And the next competition, which ends a week Monday... Um, is a Jack Grealish signed and framed Manchester City football boot. Uh, there's only uh, 99 tickets available. It only costs about £4 to enter, £3.95. Uh, so you've got very good odds there. And that ends uh, Monday, 21st of March uh, at 8.30 p.m. And that's the way the live draw is, sorry. It ends at half seven uh, on the 21st of March with the draw an hour later. So if you want to win a Jack Grealish signed framed Manchester City boot... Uh, go and enter the link in the description below. Do it. The good people of Football Prizes have been working for a long time and it's all above board. Do not worry. So this game, this game, this game, this game. Where do we start with a game like this? I'm going to start with the most obvious thing in the world. I put strikers. Notice I'll put the brackets around the S. So we all know that Manchester City need a striker. My point really is that I think we need strikers, plural. Of course, it looks like we're going to try and solve that this summer. Um, of course, we've already signed Julian Alvarez and Guardiola's already talked in press conferences how this guy could actually be a Manchester City player from the summer onwards, which is great news. Um, and of course, we're linked to Erling Haaland and another big name striker potential and or another big name striker. Not and or actually, or another big name striker. So the idea it could be that uh, we could sign Haaland or someone else. The point is, we've got to sign or have potentially two. And I think this is necessary. Now, you don't have to agree. But I was looking through the bench last night and during the game, and I felt that in general we lacked kind of that killers. Like on days like last night, when the momentum isn't good, when we're missing cities and everyone else is kind of starting to really get in their own heads, I think you need someone who's absolutely cool and a killer in front of goal. I don't think Jesus is that. He can score great goals and he can be, likewise Sterling. Maybe even Gundogan can be as well. Gundogan probably definitely. But I wouldn't say any of them are instinctively brilliant finishers who you can rely on at all times just to kill up a game. And that's not because they're not fantastic players. I mean, maybe Gundogan's earned a bit of a claim to do that. But I guess the point I'm making is... They they probably can get caught up in the procession of missed chances like the others because they are fundamentally not the strikers. They are not a striker. And midfielders and wingers and defenders, they understand the weight of burden is on them more in this team because they don't have that striker to carry the goal-scoring burden. So it's all on their shoulders. And I do think psychologically, if City start to miss chances, the weight of expectation goes on all the other players and they realise there are weaknesses as midfielders, as not natural strikers, and it starts to bog down on them. And that was my impression that if Jesus and Sterling or Gundogan came on, they could also be some of the ones that get caught up in this slight insecurity about not being the main man with goals. I could be wrong, but when I looked at the bench last night, I thought we don't need one striker because Martin Harland was on. He, he was having a good game. We need another. We need another killer in front of goal. We need someone to come on. Um, who we know has absolutely zero fear in front of goal. I'm personally hoping as well that, as well as those two, you know, maybe a couple of strikers will come in or whatever. I'm also sort of hoping that we've got the solution already within the ranks. Cole Palmer to me is an actual finisher. I genuinely think he is more than actually most probably in our team already. James McAtee scores a whole bunch of goals in the academy. Maybe these two break through as midfielders and start to actually become more natural goal scorers in the way that some of our midfielders aren't. And maybe as well, Foden finds a bit more of a goal threat as he becomes less of a false nine and goes back to his usual game facing the goal uh, and maybe as well leave the lap makes it through I don't know but in general I think we need I think I learned that we need more than one more than one next season second thing we learned is football isn't ruined <laughs> do you remember like two months ago and everyone was saying Manchester City are gross uh, and horrible and we've ruined the game because we were so far ahead and it was insurmountable and, and that was it and everyone said we destroyed the game and all of a sudden 
we haven't. The football isn't ruined. It's almost like actually Manchester City are just another team who are fallible and make mistakes like the rest of them. And money does not guarantee anything in life. It doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. It's almost like actually Liverpool are a very good side. It's almost like actually journalists once again were blowing the load far too easily, lads. You really were. Calm down and assess the game. Of course, it's not good news for Man City. I kind of wish we were ruining football right now and running away with the league. But I guess the point I'm making is. It's a long season. There will be many twists and turns. Even for the next nine, ten games in the Premier League, there will be. And that includes Liverpool too. There'll be ups and downs for both teams, in my personal opinion. I cannot see uh, this being plain sailing from here on out. There's going to be some massive twists. And that's why you don't count your chickens uh, before your eggs have been laid. Um, and maybe I've been guilty of that as well. Maybe I am. But I have a way. Football isn't ruined because it isn't. Because it's still competitive. The first thing I want to talk about is maybe we lack control at times. Now, I saw a lot of people talking online about um, how City are quite vulnerable to the transition. My controversial opinion is that I don't think we are that vulnerable to the transition. Maybe it's a slight Achilles heel, but it only really seems to show itself in games where Manchester City aren't at their very best in terms of possession. So City aren't really controlling the game with the right calmness and the right cool heads and we're kind of conceding possession far too sloppily. That is when those moments to break actually come in. Simple matter of the fact is we played against all these teams that had given us trouble before and handled them comfortably in the past at times. And that wasn't because we were any better on the transition end. It's probably just because we were in better form and controlling the ball at times. I wonder if right now we are lacking a little bit of composure. We don't seem to be quite as fluid. We're keeping the ball a bit, but we definitely look a little bit sloppier than we have done at our very, very peak, you know? Um, maybe it is a Gundogan issue. Maybe it's just the players are a little bit fatigued and tired. That can happen. They are human after all. Um, whatever it is, I do think the reason that we're conceding chances on the counter is mainly because we're making more mistakes in possession. I don't think it's because teams have fundamentally worked out how to get against us. I think it's very much self-inflicted. And it's worth pointing out, even last night, you know, everyone talked about how we were so vulnerable. I mean, nothing really. There's no real, like, kind of heart in mouth moments, you know, apart from one bit at the end with Conor Gallagher when he shot from an incredibly tight angle. Largely, they didn't create any chances. So we're not that vulnerable, but the only vulnerable vulnerabilities come often when we don't keep the ball well. It happened versus Spurs as well, where we just let... Uh, we, we let the, get Kane get the ball too easily after sloppy play and he had all the time in the world that is very fundamental it wasn't um, like an inherent problem it was just we're not doing the basics right and that's why it went wrong uh, the fourth thing we learned is Pep has a thing for no subs sometimes doesn't he uh, this is very controversial and very divisive amongst Manchester City fans and where do I stand with this I don't know man I understood last night. I understood. I did. Look, understanding and agreeing are two very different things. And I think Twitter and the internet and football fandom in general sometimes misinterprets those two things. Like you can understand something, but not necessarily agree with it. My honest opinion is I do not know where I stand with the no sub things last night. I don't really know. Honestly, if you're watching my watch along last night, at no point was I clamoring for substitutions. I wasn't, and that wasn't intentional. It wasn't a conscious decision. I only realized afterwards that at no point did I feel that way, mainly because I didn't feel like the subs were going to fundamentally change how the game was going to be. They could have, but I wasn't thinking, oh, it's guaranteed to change if that player comes on. It might have, of course, but it didn't feel absolutely a certain. And mainly because I feel like the, the thing that we were lacking wasn't necessarily there on the bench. Maybe I'm wrong there, but either way, we know Guardiola has a thing where he trusts the players to finish off the job. We know Guardiola has a thing where... I don't think Guardiola's stubborn. I think people say he's stubborn. I don't think it's that. It's more Guardiola is risk-averse as opposed to stubborn. You know, like, um, he, he doesn't like to concede the flow of the momentum of the game. And at this point, City were creating chances. Chaotically, admittedly, um, but we still were creating chances, and I guess he trusted these players to do it. I mean, I'm not going to preach... To Guardiola, that, guy, that man's forgotten more about football than all of us watching this video combined will ever know about the game. Genuinely, he's a savant-like genius. He knows more about football. Doesn't mean he's not possible of making mistakes. Of course he doesn't. Everyone makes mistakes. But I wouldn't say he's stubborn as such. I mean, he's just, he trusts the players to do the job to an extent. And he understands that introducing a player could actually have the opposite effect. He could actually could actually make the game more open. It could mean that, you know, we stop creating chances full stop. It could mean that that play doesn't quite get up to speed and gives the ball away sloppily, even more sloppy than the others. Basically, it's just as likely in his head at times something to go wrong or go worse than it is to fix it. We don't have to agree with that, but we've been sold on the idea that if things aren't working, you just change stuff. And 
Actually, that's not always the correct solution. It might have been in this instance, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you don't have to, you know, throw the baby out of the bathwater or change all the personnel. Sometimes a slight tweak in the sidelines can get the job done. And there'll be many times where Guardiola does that, and we don't notice it, and we don't complain. On the days like last night, we do complain. I guess the point I'm making is no subs, it's div divisive, maybe it was wrong, but there is method to the, there is um, a method to the madness with Guardiola, always. So we, we could do worse than remembering that. And finally, we're still top of the league. <laughs> we're still top of the league. It's worth remembering that. I saw so many people, probably fairly, tagging me in a tweet when I said I thought we were going to win the league and I didn't think Liverpool were good enough to catch us. I'll have my egg in my face if that happens. But what I will say to those people is that hasn't happened yet. Liverpool haven't yet caught us. They might do that, but they haven't yet. So I guess the point I'm making is we're still in a very good position. Uh, the end of the season is closing in and these players have earned our respect. And yes, well done to Liverpool for winning that many games in a row. If they win, you know, the, re le the next 10, they deserve to win the league anyway. You know, that's an incredible run of half a season winning in a row. That's an insane performance. In that instance, what can Manchester City really do over the win 19 games in a row instead of eight? you know what more can we possibly do in that instance but we are still top of the league the fact of the matter is Liverpool would absolutely swap positions with us right now it's worth remembering that people were throwing in the towel last night online people were acting like we blow the title race it's not as simple as that man where's your calm where's your nerve where's your trust in this bunch of players I'm not saying you can't be you can't be a little bit apprehensive because I am I'm not saying this run of form isn't optimal. It, 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 it's not great. It isn't great. Um, concerning, sorry, not optimal. It isn't great. Um, but what I'm saying is it's worth look, taking you know a step back and looking at the bigger picture. They do have to come to the Etihad. They do have some difficult games coming up. There's a good chance they'll win most of them. But I'd be surprised if they win every single one. If they do, they've done something incredibly special and they deserve to be honoured for that. It's worth remembering that. So guys, they are five things that I took from this game. How are you feeling? Do let me know down in the comments what you make of it. Don't forget to check out those football prizes. Uh, Jack Greenish signed framed boot would be great. And of course, two Tunnel Club tickets. They end, uh, that ends tonight at half seven. So good luck. Thank you to my Patreon producer, Scott Denneby, and all the Patreons scrolling down the side of the screen. You're all absolute legends. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Things will be okay. I promise you. And don't forget... Regardless of what happens, we're going to have some strikers next season. It's going to be absolutely great.